Hey comrades. So I was thinking about the jumping off point for today's video. And um, I know it's futile to make the videos, but um, I feel like it's like my contribution and uh, obligation, you know, to, to, do these, to do these videos and to try to articulate the point in a more coherent manner building upon the other antinatalists and ethalists in the community. And it's like, we need to pool our information together in this community. And um, as a way, like, I mean, antinatalism and ethalism is a way of philosophically taking morality and responsibility about preventing harm. And so we don't want other people to suffer, right? But knowing that conversation and debate and argumentation and discourse with people like i mean i don't know how many people had you guys talk to you about this and it's been successful where they're like oh i didn't think about it like that i understand now that having kids is wrong like that eureka eureka aha moment where they realize that they're playing russian roulette and, and with someone else's head like it's like oh put the bullet in and then spin it and then, but it's not their head it's somebody else's head like articulating it in a way to prevent the future war and we're at war now but it's an ideal it's an ideal war it's a mimetic war mimetic conflict and like you look far enough in the future and if the internet isn't destroyed and everything like that, I mean, it's going to it's going to be a, a war between the breeders and the ethelists and the extinctionists. I mean, all these apocalyptic films like The Road, the people who survive in these situations are the people who are willing to just throw away their humanity and their um, compassion and empathy and sympathy for other living beings. And there's a scene in The Road where the father and the son find a home and they're like looting and looking for supplies and they come across the basement and it's just a whole bunch of naked people that are locked in the basement and there's like a shot where someone's missing a leg but they're still alive and it's cannibals like cannibals go out and hunt people other survivors and then bring them back put them in the basement and then eat them part by part because they want to survive if that's what you're willing to do to survive, that's like literally the metaphor and the allegory of what Amendum is talking about with the cannibalism. Cannibalism, addiction, consumption, reproduction, you know? And um, so in order to prevent those horrible apocalypse scenarios from happening, we have to figure out how to get through their psychology. And I was thinking about the starting off point in understanding the uh, psychology of the addicts is essentially understanding the psychology of yourself. Uh, I'm talking to myself in more, more than a way where I, I'm looking at myself in the camera. I'm also going to be in the future watching this video over. I watch them before I upload and I'm talking to you. You're listening to me. You're essentially an addict to something. Vaping, anime, jerking off, model kit building, fitness, gym, working out. You have to be addicted to something to be li to, to live. And that's like the difference between pro-mortalism and ethylism. Ethylism, you can still be alive and enjoy your addiction. You just don't need to make a new addict. And so when you're talking to somebody, when I'm talking to somebody about this, this topic, about why it's morally wrong not to have kids, you know, I've already heard all the arguments before. That's why nothing surprises me in this context is, oh, there's no one to ask the consent for. If you can't ask, it's like, I can't, that's like, that's the argument. It's like, if you're not able to ask for consent, don't do the thing. It's like, well, I can't, there's no person to ask for consent. Your act of creating the person is the first imposition. It's like, that's like the, the line of like, if you're not able to ask consent, but your act is going to create a person that you can't retroactively erase more like ethically. Like I was watching Mark Antinatalist channel, shout out to Mark, hey Mark. But it's like, they complain about that. It's like a title on his video. They complain about messy suicide, but they won't legalize it. You know, if my kid's not happy, they can kill themselves. Like my mom and dad have told me to kill myself. And it's like, but they won't help. They don't want to assist in the 
the procurement of a painless, dignified death because they're morals, right? And it's like uh, with integrity, like moral integrity, but yet they had no moral integrity not to create the person in the first place. It's like there's this block. It's like this mimetic mental barrier. And no matter what logic you say, it prevents them from understanding. Because it's like that's how threatening it is to their sense of identity and their sense of being as a person. Because when you accept, and you don't really have a choice, you either understand what's being said or you don't. You don't really get to choose anything. I've already advocated that free will doesn't exist. I'm a determinist. But the thing is, is they don't get to choose not to understand or understand, right? So even their response is predetermined. And there's a disconnect between what you're able to observe internally within them to the response they're having of what's being said and what's being said by them. So you say, it's wrong to have kids. You go through the list of arguments and they're processing it, right? And they have a functioning brain, right? But they're an addict. And worse than that, they're an addict in denial, right? Of what nature and biology really is. And so they're going to defend the addiction, but also defend the continuation of the addiction. And so there's a difference and distinction between enjoying your addiction if it doesn't cause harm to others and then creating future potential unnecessary harm. And so I forgot what the video it was, but it's like some antinatalist or ethicist was talking about someone else that they had were listening to or they were having a response video to something else. I forgot what video it was, but it was like, you can almost see it and hear it in them where they understand the chain of thoughts and the reason and the evidence and the logic, but then they like run into this psychological block. With, that's the mom. It's like for lack of a better word. And that's what the guy was saying is like, I have that memory in my head of the video. It's like they're running into their mom in their head. And and this is a Silent Hill quote from the film, the first Silent Hill film. Mom is God in the eyes of child, right? And so that's why most women are theists or believers in God or worshipers of nature or worshipers of Gaia, Mother Earth, Mother Nature, the universe. And mother is the worst possible thing. And there's this channel meme analysis where the guy, I don't know his name, Meme analysis, he was talking about the mother and the whore, the mother and Madonna. And it's like, you, you don't, you don't want to meet a whore because you wouldn't want to bring her home, bring her home to your mother. It's like, well, if you're an ethicist, you really wouldn't want to have a mother. You really wouldn't want to be at all because it's just like, that's like the problem. So the dichotomy, and that's like the Sigmund Freud thing is like, that's like the anima representation is like the best quote unquote, the best noble, honorable version of woman is the mother and the worst degenerate, horrible, awful slut, you know, loser version of a woman is the whore. Cause you wouldn't want to bring a whore at the home to your mom to show as your girlfriend. But it's like the whore is better than the mom because it's like in my version, the whore wouldn't want a kid, but the whore is different than a slut because the slut fucks for fun. The whore fucks for money. The whore and the hooker, the hooker, it's like that's the oldest profession, fucking for money. But it's like, it's really just like, that's what female nature is, is they have to get something else out of the sex because that's their only bargaining tool. It's like, I need to get something of more value or perceived more value than the actual act of sex. You know what I mean? That's why I'm starting to believe or uh, speculate that women don't actually like sex. They like sex as a means to an end, a means to a child, a means to the yacht club, the penthouse, the fucking Ruby Tuesdays. Like, it's a means to an end for them. And it's the opposite for men. And I'm speaking from a man point of view, is that the Ruby Tuesdays is theoretically a means to the end to get to sex. But it's like, it's the opposite for women. It's like they're using sex to get the child and they're using the child as a way to distract themselves from the survival necessity and futility of it. And so that was a tangent, but it's like psychologically 
when you explain antinatalism or epilism to someone, they're running psychologically into their mom, and their mom is God in their psychological view. And so, well, my mom took care of me. She was a good lady. She helps me pay for this hotel. It's like, my mom was a good lady. If she was enlightened, compassionate, philosophical, inquisitive, then she wouldn't have me. The whore is out for money, but she has no fucking, like, plan for a child. She'll have a child by accident, like my ex-girlfriend, but then there's the slut who fucks for fun. And I don't even know about if sluts actually ever existed or if they were just, like, a figment of imagination. But it's, like, maybe in high school. But it seems as though, like, everyone I'm talking to, all these chicks I'm talking to online, they're just scammers. And then the chicks I've cold approached in person, and this is, like, a mix of, like, the incel thing with ethelism because it all turns t- comes back to philosophy and psychology it's like if women loved life you know what i mean if they loved themselves if they loved others if they loved the unborn it's like you know so it's just it's men are horny and they're logical about everything else except for the act of creating life and then women are like logical about everything else except for the act of it's like you know horny versus selfish horny horny and greedy right it's just like every all these technologies were invented to appease women but then they keep having kids and then it's like you know i'm just repeating myself but it's like i you know it conceptually the mother and the whore are both bad things the mother is a whore right it's like they're both not good you know what i mean Father time, mother nature, then what's their child? Their child is death. Father time, mother nature. They, they copulate and they, conception, and they have conception. What would their child be? It would be death. Their child would be the Grim Reaper. That's what it would be. Psychologically, like, synthesizing the two elements. Time, duration, nature, entropy, decay, all these things. And so it's just like... You know, be grateful that you don't live in Africa. Okay, well, what are the Africans grateful for? That they had a meal today. And so it's just like exploitation all the way down. And um, there's a commenter, a subscriber on my channel. And it's funny because his name is your dad. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm full of hate. And hate will cleanse the earth. Love is going to keep making more problems, right? By their definition. Right. It's like, it's like, it's semantics, right? It's like logically more. It's like, and that's the word game. That's why like, no matter what words combination you really try to use, they will misinterpret and misrepresent the argument and then contrive a way to justify the act of procreation, even though like there's no need to do it. You know what I mean? There's no need to have sex. It's a desire built into you injected into you when you're here and it's like i'm in i'm in a body just like you an amendment theoretically right nsa fbi all the fucking shadow agencies watching the aliens and all the fucking it's like if you're in a body and you're not going to be like a buddhist monk and be an aesthetic not an aesthetic but an aesthetic what the schopenhauer i don't know what he said but it's just like someone who retreats from society a recluse, a neat, Eldar, let it rot, lying flat. You contribute as little as possible to society because, like, there's no guarantees out there. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, essentially, all the pleasures are paid for with suffering. That That's the currency. You know, that's the, the real currency. And, like, intimacy and love and affection and loyalty and community and brotherhood and camaraderie and it's like all of these things are reactions to the situation that you find yourself in and needing to make the most out of it and um it just doesn't go anywhere i mean it's like there's that's like the dividing line and it's like you it's like i've also understood the idea it's like it's us versus them it's like they are us right? We were them and they will be us when they understand that suffering sucks. And it's like life hasn't kicked them hard enough. It hasn't, it hasn't hurt them enough personally to understand it. And it's like, it's all over the media. It's all over all movies. Like, I mean, it's just, you take away the violence and the suffering part of these stories 
and what, what's left. You know what I mean? From Winnie the Pooh to Avengers, there is a conflict, conflict resolution, climax, act one, act two, act three. And it's like the hero's journey is like a summary. You know, you can summarize the hero's journey into a two hour, three hour thing. But you go through life and it's like you're supposed to be learning lessons and becoming better than you were before and better than other people. It's like I um, I want to be better than myself in the past, but I also still want to be better than other people because life is competition. Competition, steel sharpens steel, as um, Illicit Mind would say. Steel sharpens steel. When I'm playing Soul Calibur and I match up against a, uh, a new player and I just steamroll them, so it's not fun. It's not fun to just steamroll somebody if it's supposed to be a fair, honest competition, right? But it's different if I change the context to honest competition, to torture. If I had my dad here in a gimp costume, like from Pulp Fiction, the zipper and everything, and his eyes zipped up, and I had him like just on a chain. If I had my dad here, then yes, I'd want to steamroll and fuck over my dad on a chain. But that's not competition. But that's what it's going to come to in the future if they don't recognize that the philosophy, the morals, the ethics, and the logic are trying to prevent this very thing from happening. Because in the future, there will be a war against the ethylists and the breeders. Once it's widespread enough, the black pill is slowly saturating and like, infiltrating every aspect of society. The Barbie movie, Schopenhauer, the video game industry, dating economy, food education, politics, religion, it's all just, it always was shit. It always was shit. Because your dad's love was not enough for your mom to make her happy enough to not want the kid, right? And if your mom loved you, then she wouldn't have you. I still do believe, and I don't even have to believe, I know love exists. I, I know love, I just got a text. I know love exists. I know love exists because of the way I love. I love Link, right? It's like, I love the things behind me, but the problem is loving things instead of people. And the idea, and it's like loving ideas more than people. Ideas last and people don't. They leave, they break up with you, they betray you. And it's like, can you really call it a betrayal if they never cared about you to begin with? You know what I mean? It's like, you weren't betrayed by being born. They never cared about you. They were doing it selfishly. And it's like I was talking to someone the other day on Xbox Live and we had a good conversation. Even though he disagrees with the premise and the idea and the logic of the philosophy, it's that having a child is not selfish. It's like if somebody wants a child, the want in the sentence is what – it's like you want a child. It's like you don't need a child. Therefore, it's selfish. And that's like go back to the, the semantics, the dialectics, the duplicitous glib, like – maneuvering of the psychology and so that's why the blade you know the sword is going to have to manifest like the pen is mightier than the sword the the speech is supposed to fucking influence the word is supposed to influence the world and so if the word of ethelism and buddhism and negative utilitarianism is not enough verbally and written they're not reading the books. It's going to manifest itself in the real world physically as a sword, and more likely than a sword, it's going to be guns. Once it becomes understood, because the incels, you're a product of these people, the breeders, the whores, the bell delphines, the amaranths, everyone, that's the banner that unites all of us, is that, oh, this is because my mom and dad are idiots. That's the greatest fucking gift that I can give mankind. Fuck Nietzsche. Like, Nietzsche's a piece of shit. And I'm glad that I fucking lived long enough to understand that Nietzsche was full of shit. He was a coper. Nietzsche was an incel coper. Lying to himself. You don't create values. You don't create new ideas. It's just pain and pleasure, fundamentally. Arthur Schopenhauer wasn't sexy. You see, the thing is, like, they're both incels. Schopenhauer was a realist and a pessimist. And then Nietzsche was like head in the clouds and this like glorifying life and existence. And it's just like, no, you live long enough. And it's like, okay, I, I, I get it. But it's like these conversations, again, you're not choosing to understand my words, but these people, they understand, but they have a block. And it's like the disconnect from their mind and the psychology to their tongue and their actions. It's like something else has control of their tongue and their mind, right? 
and that's like cognitive dissonance and the mind-body duality thing, dichotomy. And um, if, if our words can't stop them, it's going to have to come to violence. And um, there's no, there, like how can you actually look at yourself in the mirror and I'm looking, it's like defending life. How do you defend existence? The, your own life, the past, and I'm making the points that Abendam has made. It's like, how bad does it have to be, mom and dad? You wouldn't want to be the Christ on the cross. So why would you have a kid that would theoretically have to be that? And I'm not calling myself a Christ, but it's like, you wouldn't want your kid to be a fucking rapist. You wouldn't want your kid to be a rape victim. Ted Bundy and all that. You wouldn't want your kid. You want your kid to be Elon Musk because he's rich, you know? And so like the economic decisions and cost benefit analysis and risk aversion and I was watching another channel. It's like, what is it? Uh, collective dismissal or something else? I forgot. I can't check the, the name of your channel now because I'm recording. But I was watching some of his stuff, and he's saying that like, this is a post love society, a post love civilization. And I would say that I'm arguing against you is that love still exists. It's just that people's conception and um, understanding of what love is. It's like, uh, you can say it's a post-intimacy world. You can say it's a post-emotional connection world, but love still exists. When you understand what love really is, is that you love someone for who they are, not for what they do, right? You can't meet your, fic your favorite, fi I, I can't meet Link. I can't meet fictional characters. You love them for who they are, and you are what you do when it counts. And so if you are what you do when it counts, and that's who you are, then you love your, these people even though you can't meet them and they can't meet you. And you go on loving them regardless if they love you or not too. It's like, well, if they don't love me, that doesn't mean I still don't love them because they're badass, right? It's like they're badass. I fucking love those motherfuckers. You know what I mean? But when you bring in the economics, it's like, oh, I love them because they do this for me. And so I'll, they do this for me. I'll do that. That's an exchange of physical interactions and exchanges of um, trinkets and affection. But if you read the, the Ayn Rand book, The Virtue of Selfishness, it is an exchange. The real love is an exchange, an exchange of value but it should be identical and equal to the value you're exchanging. So it's like when you love someone for who they are, you see part of yourself, your highest value in them. And so it's like you, you value the same things I value. I see myself in you. You can only really truly love yourself. And so depending on what your value hierarchy is and what you value as your top priority – Whatever that top priority is, that top value, when you see that in someone else, that's when you recognize their sense of life, their sense of character is identical or parallel to your own. It's not that, it's that you're the same person as them, but you value the same major, intrinsic, important value. And it's either truth or happiness. And it's like that's really the dichotomy or the duality. It's like which one do you place above the other? Do you place truth above our happiness or do you place happiness above truth? If, and it's like, that's not a popular or mainstream wide, ex, widespread accepted um, paradigm. And so um, the blade, the reason will become a blade and the blade will become reason. If there, if our words, if my words and your words and Amendon's words and Benatar and Schopenhauer and um, Ligotti, everyone, it's like uh, these people, it's like force is the supreme authority, which all other authorities derive from. You know what I mean? Link uses a sword. Ganon, Ganondorf, all, everything. It's all violence. And so uh, I recognize now that my words are completely futile for those who are going to continue having kids. And so uh, this is just like a video for the future. And um, you guys have truth on your side. You know what I mean? And if you're willing to admit you're wrong when you come across new information, more to you. That's like the that's the whole best part of science. It's like, oh, there's evidence now that goes like counter to what I'm saying. So I have a meme, I'll post it in the community tab after I upload this. It's just um 
there's no evidence that the world can show me that makes it right. Like morality, morality and ethics and like understanding suffering is not a good thing. Oh, but it builds character. It's like, you wouldn't need to build a character if your parents had character. If your parents had character and intelligence and constitution and philosophy and enlightenment and spirituality, you wouldn't exist. I mean, I, Rita McLeod, would not exist if my parents thought. No, they wouldn't, you wouldn't exist if they thought like you. It's like thinking is thinking. See, that's like the semantics again. It's like, I don't think like you, Rita. It's like, you don't think. The whole problem, the whole, like, it's like, you don't want a calculator that gives you the wrong answer. What's the answer to life? The answer to life is to end life. It ends. And it's like the circle of life. I was talking to that guy in Xbox Live. It's like, it's the circle of life from Lion King. It's like, that is a cartoon. It literally happened. I've literally talked to somebody who used the circle of life from Lion King as their defense. It's just like, lions obviously have the best position, right? And it's like, well, what kills a lion? Usually, it's old age. And so, like, the grass, it's like the grass isn't feeling pain, and the antelope is getting its throat torn out by lions, and the hyenas eat the scraps, right? And then, so, like, that guy was literally using our cartoon. And then he was also bringing up the, the immortality project. Not his words, but it's the having children is a way to achieve immortality. It's like, why would you want to be immortal? Eventually, you're going to get bored, right? It's like, oh, I've done every possible fucking thing that a human body can actually ever do, which is eat, fuck, poop, get high, kill, and, like, what? There's not a new sense, sense, sense organ, you know what I mean? Creating stories and art and drawings, it's like that. all that art and music and knowledge, and people simply don't understand what they're listening to. They don't understand what's being said and they want to misinterpret it. And then like, just like they, they'll take whatever they want and then misinterpret it for their own personal agendas. Like I don't want to be alive. You know what I mean, I don't want you to be alive, but you are. And so it's like, we have to figure out a way to stop these people with words, if possible, before it comes to violence. And I don't think it's possible. But it's like, I, cause I haven't seen it. I haven't seen someone change their mind. Like, oh, you're right. It is wrong. It's like, you know what I mean? If someone can go from an atheist to a Christian or a Christian to an atheist, then theoretically that paradigm shift should be possible from a breeder potentially to a non-breeder. If they already have kids, then it's probably already even more impossible. Theoretically, I don't know, right? It's just like someone who doesn't already have kids but wants to, hold the arguments and they realize before it happens oh you're right you're wrong it's wrong to have hits i get it if we're able to figure out how to beat their psychology then we can prevent further suffering in the future and that's like that's the conundrum right it's like already understanding the moral philosophy and the logical like nature of the organism like the truth now is in our hands it's in your hands and my hands but now we have to figure out a way to keep the sword from being pulled. There's a quote from Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. And revengeance is a funny word. It couldn't just be vengeance or revenge. It's revengeance, which is, is I, I don't even know it's a real word. But the quote from Raiden, one of my all-time favorite video game characters, and I love Raiden, and the quote is, one sword keeps another in its sheath. And so... That's really what, like, now the game is, is how do we figure out how to keep our own sheath in our sword? Before It's like one sword keeps another in its sheath. And so the words, the reason, like in magic, the symbolism and esoteric symbolism, magical symbolism and stuff, the sword is what is represented of reason. Reason is represented by sword. And... And we have to figure out a way. I have to figure out a way. You guys have to figure, help me figure out a way to figure out how we can stop these people from having kids before it requires actual bloodshed. I mean, I'm up for killing moms and dads. Don't get me wrong. I would love to kill moms and dads, but I would also love to beat them philosophically too, right? Both of them are wins for me. I win either way. Like I want to... 
beat them into submission with my words until they get it, or hammer their teeth in. So either way, I win. Either way, I really win. Definitely, I mean, it's just like, it's a good thing I personally enjoy violence, if it's against the right person. And philosophically, this is the best fucking word fight. It's just like, well, they keep having kids. So there's going to be another version of me and you here. There'll be another version of you and me. More amendments, more places, more illicit minds. And so if the internet continues and the literature is still accessible, some angry teen in the future, some 15-year-old kid is going to be like, wait a second, my mom and dad are idiots. And they're not going to be emotionally stable, right, because of their life experiences and the trauma they've experienced. And the only conclusion that they're going to come up with is I have to start killing moms and dads. It's not even that hard to come up with. There's already been all the school shootings, Columbine, Boston bombing, all the terrorist attacks. So just like Gnostic antinatalist said, it's like, yeah, I, I actually retract my point um, that ethylism is going to be used for violence. And how do we prevent that from happening if people don't listen to anything else other than violence? If, a, if force is the supreme authority, which all other authorities derive from, then this philosophical debate and discourse and argument is completely futile, and it's just jerking myself off, and it's just going to be violence one day. And that's all I have to say.